Hi, I'm Danny Gasparini, and welcome to this segment of One on One. Today I'm joined by William Turner, who is the Vice President uh, Operations for the Hiller Aviation Museum, which is here in San Carlos, for a few of you who might not have known about the Hiller Aviation Museum. Willie, thanks for, um, for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's first talk about when the uh, museum was open, and then we'll get a little bit into who brought it to us? Well, it, it's hard to believe. It actually opened in June 5th of 1998. <laughs> so uh, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. we just uh, passed our 15th anniversary. So it's it's been around for a while now. And um, tell us a little bit about Stanley. Well, Stan Hiller, Hiller uh, was a an aviation pioneer. He, he was actually a true genius. Uh, had the opportunity to work for him even before the museum opened. And it's rare you get to meet people like that in life uh, who were just way ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was. I mean, he built his first helicopter at 19 years old. Wow. And this is before the internet, you know, to go online and say, how do I build a helicopter? Right. Um, so we wonder what he did when he was five and six years old. I mean, he, he Legos and, and, you know. Well, I can tell you at 14 years old, he had his own company building little um, uh, cars that had little engines in them, and he had to build the engines to put in them. They actually ran like uh, you know remote control type cars, but they and they ran around in a circle. And he sold them it and uh, for a, I think it was uh, thirty seven dollars a piece or something like that. Now they sell on eBay for six hundred. <laughs> so and and that was back in the fifties. Uh, yes, that would actually been in the uh, late thirties. Late thirties. Thirties and early forties. Yeah. To have that sort of mechanical mind is uh -huh. it just seems so amazing yep. so he she always loved tinkering mm -hmm. um, always had that sort of mechanical mind mm -hmm. When did Stanley sort of know that aviation, the sky, was his Well, it's kind of oyster. interesting. At 19, when he built the first helicopter on the West Coast called the XH-44, first flew it in Berkeley Stadium uh, in uh, July of 1944. And uh, he saw, it's interesting, when he was asked that question by a reporter, he said, I saw business opportunity. He was a businessman first and mm. foremost, then an engineer, right. and then a pilot, but a businessman first. And he saw an, a business opportunity. And so that's why he got into building helicopters was uh, for the business side of it. And he went on to build over 2,000 helicopters and employed over 3,000 people in Menlo Park in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s. So then how do we go from building um helicopters to now an aviation to museum. To an aviation museum. Well, fortunately, he was also a pack rat. <laughs> and so <laughs> he kept his stuff. He kept a lot of his early aircraft and memorabilia and other people's. He started collecting it. And he had a private little museum in Redwood City, right mm -hmm. there by Target. I do and, remember that. Yeah, and it was uh, not open to the public. and it, But you walked in there, and it was a warehouse full of really cool stuff. But his goal was to always open up something that he could give back to the community. And that was his way of giving back to the community, was opening up a museum. And that's why he chose San Carlos. Right. I, I, I was um, on the city council in the in the mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. So I remember when um, the family was thinking about um, opening something grand and was looking yes. for properties. And, and certainly in Redwood City, we were hoping that we would find a, a great spot. But yes. where they ended up is so wonderful and perfect mm -hmm. um, right there. It made sense on an airport. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. it has all the great amenities. And, and of course, being next to San Carlos Airport is right. a perfect place to um, house all the outdoor um, uh, aircraft. And all that, of our special events that we're able to do. Right. Yeah. You can come and mm -hmm. fly in and, and land your <laughs> helicopters and Santa gets out and right. the Easter Bunny gets out. But um, you do a lot more than have um, a lot of aviation airplanes that kids can go in and visit and touch and see mm -hmm. and learn about. Tell us some about the educational programs that happen at the uh, Hiller Aviation well, we have Museum. some fantastic educational programs. That has really taken off, if you will, at mm -hmm. the museum over the past uh, five years or so. Uh, we do over 10,000 school kids uh, last year. And um, our summer camp will do over 1,000 kids. Uh, so we have these programs set up, uh, both for summer camp, as I was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, they're week-long programs. And uh, it's just all kind of everything from test pilot school to um, uh, inventor's workshop school and all these different types of camps they can mm -hmm. go to, uh, to the classrooms coming in. The schools, uh, they have uh, programs that they do. They build things, and then they get tours. And uh, it's, a, it's become a very fantastic program there. Right. The museum. And you know what's what's interesting is um, the craft, the aircraft that you have there um, is all, of course, life size. Yes. And so I think it's an eye opener for children because they're really the only experience with aircraft is in books. Mm -hmm. 
and something they might see on the television or in a movie. When you are standing next to what the actual size of a 747 mm -hmm. wheel is, mm -hmm. um, it, I think it really brings it into um, context as to the, the massiveness of these aircraft. And it really gives them a great appreciation for mm -hmm. knowing what it must take to put these things in the sky. Yes, yeah, and it is, and that's, that's it. Uh, we like that wow factor when people right. first walk into our gallery and all of a sudden you just look up and there's airplanes hanging on the ceiling and on the ground and helicopters and uh, it's, a, it's that wow factor right. of, and they get to walk into a this. cockpit and actually see the instruments mm -hmm. and know um, the complexities to flying a plane. It sort yes. of isn't what we see in cartoons where there's just this steering wheel and they go back and they do this and but yet the instruments are amazing to see. Well, and that's one of the things that we try to do is uh, you can't open up everything, though we do what we call a couple times a year open cockpit, mm -hmm. and then we open up more of our aircraft than we normally do. Uh, but just having like our 747 right. uh, front end that you can go in and sit in the cockpit, and that's a lot of people's first reaction too is, wow, how do they know what all these buttons do? Right. All these switches, and that's why pilots go to school for years and years to understand what right. all that stuff does. Right, right, yeah. and it's so great that it's, um, I really love the hands-on aspect. Um, of it, the, you also do a lot of community events. So mm -hmm. while it's great for children and families and even adults to come and visit and see the museum and experience the aviation firsthand, you do a lot of community events. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, like our uh, events that we do um, aviation-wise or bringing well, outside the community, people. Yeah, the community yeah. is allowed to come in and, and oh, host yes. their own, like yes. the St. Carlos Education Foundation right. does an event there. So it's right. a great, the museum is also a great community asset. It is, yeah. We like to use the museum as much as possible. And so when we're closed, like at nighttime especially, it's like, well, there's an opportunity there. And we have all kinds of groups come in, community groups, uh, business groups, uh, private organizations right. that use the facility at night because it, it makes it so much nicer when you're looking for a, a reception or right. some type of environment other than, as we like to say, you know, the basic ballroom with four walls and a chandelier. Right. Right. I mean, we have really cool stuff on the walls, and so, yeah, we like to rent, you know, have people come in and do that. speaking of unique events, you have your food trucks uh, every Wednesday night. Yes. So tell us about that. Food trucks has really, again, taken off. We use that word a lot around there, but it uh, it's fly me to the food, if you will. And uh, we do it every Wednesday from 11 to 2, and it is gourmet food trucks, and it's the top food trucks here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, we rotate them out every week, so it's different ones that come uh, and people have their favorites and then people like to come and try something new and mm -hmm. you have that ability to do it. And uh, it has really become a great community asset in that sense because there's not a lot to eat on that side of the freeway on the east right. side of uh, you know, 101. Right. So we get people to be able to do that and uh, they appreciate being able to come. And then it, the residuals are moms that, that get to come uh, and bring their kids and then have the, the gourmet food trucks. Right, so is the museum open when the food trucks are in yes. your parking lot? Yes. So you can kind of just decide to come there. There's probably a food truck for everyone's tasting. Yes. Um, and then they can wander in and out of the museum and have sort of a real family night. Oh, sure. Yeah, the, yeah. The, it's open. So uh, a lot of people, we get a lot of business people for the food trucks. Uh, mm -hmm. We get two groups, the moms with the kids mm -hmm. and uh, and then the business. And the business people are probably the most of it. Uh, and they have to get back to work. But the target for them is, you know, that we I put advertisements out there. Hey, right. this weekend we have a cool airplane coming. Come check it out. Right. And they do. They come yeah. back and take a look at so it. So it's, yeah. a, it's a great win-win for both yes. the museum and for also and the community. Yeah, visiting yeah. Um, and using the... Uh, area as a, as a good food source yeah, yeah. Uh, and a great parking, I should say, too. And it's easy yeah. parking, yes. So, um, <laughs> just getting right back to the museum, because we just have about a minute left, okay. what would you say is your top three exhibits? What, do, what does everyone want to talk about? What does everybody want to talk about? Well, that 747's got to be number one. Uh, to get into a 747 and feel the controls and act like a, cock, you know, a pilot, and we have a, a docents in there that flew those aircraft. So if you have the time, they'll they'll show you how to start the engines, even though they don't really start. Right. Um, and then our, seg our second one, we just got an, uh, an albatross. It's a boat plane, mm -hmm. and it flew around the world on a recreation of Amelia Earhart's flight. So that's probably our, our next coolest one. And then the last one that people just like to see uh, uh, is the Hiller flying platform because it looks like a flying carpet. Oh, <laughs> so people my gosh. like to come and see that. Well, um, I, we're out of time, but I and I want people to know that there are new exhibits coming all of the time, so they should visit your website and find out what's coming on the docket. And I want to thank you, Willie, for joining us um, and telling us a little bit about Hiller Aviation Museum. My pleasure. Thank you for and having me. And we'll see all of you next time on One on One.